Okay, I'm going to use this example to show you two different ways of potentially solving a problem. The first, of course, is your standard, just do a little bit of algebra using your equations to arrive at a final answer. And then the second way I want to solve this problem is to use graphing. And I think it's an underutilized uh, way of looking at problems. And certainly it makes some problems, you know, 10 times easier than trying to do it with algebra. So in this example, we have uh, two runners that we're interested in. And if we put them on a number line, we have the finish line out here, which is a thousand meters away. The first runner who finally breaks free is located right here at X equals zero. And at this point in space, they are moving at 5.4 meters per second. There's another runner, which is 150 meters in front of him, located right here. So we could say this is x equals 150. And this runner has a speed of 4.4 um, meters per second. And so basically what we want to know is who's going to cross the finish line first. That is, at a thousand meters, who's going to be in front of the other? Or who has a position of 1,000 before the other? Okay, so the way we're going to approach this problem is to first identify the information we have for each person. And so we're going to have runner one, and his final position is unknown. His initial position is equal to zero. His velocity is 5.4 meters per second. And the time to uh, cross the finish line first is unknown. Then we have runner two. We should have subscripts on all of these variables. For runner two, we have x. <laughs> These should all be ones, not twos. We have x final two is unknown. We have x initial two is equal to 150 meters. V two is equal to 4.4 meters per second. And T is unknown. Now, the way to solve this problem, the best approach is really just to figure out where do they cross paths. Instead of trying, you, now you could calculate how long it takes to go from, uh, for runner one to go from his position to a thousand meters. You could also calculate the time it takes for runner two to, to start at his position of 150 and go to a thousand. Or we could figure out where do they cross paths? Where on this number line is that going to be? Are they going to cross paths somewhere here on this side of the finish line? Or is it on the other side of the finish line? And that's the approach that I'm going to take. So for each runner, we have to set up an equation which describes their motion. So we have uh, x final 1 minus x initial 1 is equal to v1 times t. Uh, x initial was 0, and so we get x final 1 is equal to v1 times t. For runner 2, we have x final 2 is, uh, oops. For runner 2, we have x final 2 minus x initial 2 is equal to v2 times t. So x final 2 is equal to x initial 2 times or plus v2 times t. Okay, now if we just kind of check off what we know and what we don't know, we're going to find that x final is unknown, v1 is known, t is not known x final 2 is not known, x initial 2 is known, v2 is known, but t is not known. Now, we're going to use these two equations right here to
to do our graph. So let's go ahead and do that now before we go any further. So if I pull up my calculator, I go to y equals, and for runner 1, we have v1, which is 5.4 times t. And then for runner 2, we have 150 plus 4.4 times t. We graph that out. Set your scale to something appropriate, and we can look for the intersection. So now we'll go second calc, and number five is intersection. And it tells us that they intersect at 810 meters. Now this is a position time graph because I was plotting position on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So the answer we should get here is that they cross paths at 810 meters. So there's still 100 or 90 meters left in this race. I'm sorry, 190 meters left in this race before uh, the race is over. Okay, so let's continue. Um, X final is what we're looking for because X final one, let me write this over here. X final one is equal to X final two. So let's just call that X final. Now, we don't want to eliminate these variables, so what that means is we're going to have to solve one of these for time, because they both start at the same time, and they, of course, intersect at the same time. So we're going to solve one of these for time and substitute it into the other equation. Oftentimes, it's easiest just to take the simplest equation and solve it for what you want, and then substitute over. And that's what I'm going to do in this case. So t is equal to x final divided by v1. Now we put that into t into our other equation. And we get x final is equal to x initial 2 plus v2 times the quantity of x final divided by v1. Now we've got to get all the x finals together. And the easiest way to do this is going to be to divide the entire equation by x final. So if we divide all of this, or multiply it by 1 over x, what we get is 1 is equal to x initial 2 over x final plus v2 over v1. Now we're going to move v2 over v1 to the other side. So we get 1 minus v2 over v1 is equal to x initial 2 over x final. And now we can take this whole quantity here on the left side and divide that into x initial 2 and move x final to the other side. So we get x final is equal to x initial 2 divided by 1 minus v2 over v1. Substituting our values, x initial 2 was 150. That should not be a superscript, that should be a subscript. So we get 150 divided by 1 minus v2 was 4.4, v1 was 5.4, and now we'll use our calculator. 150 divided by the quantity of 1 minus 4.4 divided by 5.4. And we get 810 meters. So x final is equal to 810 meters.